Hey, what's up guys? It's a uh, art book addiction here, and we're here with a new art book review. So today, we're going to be looking at uh, Form and Frame, Volume 1, by Jeremy Fence, right? Um, so, I got this book from, uh, during CTN, right? I actually met Jeremy. Uh, if you don't know his work, he's worked on, I believe, Destiny 2, um... Let's see there's there's some there's some other games that he's worked on he, he's 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 got his work he, he's got his name around a good amount of places i can't really remember that many right but i i i, I know for sure that he worked on destiny 2 right <clears throat> yeah um really great artist man really really love his work um he's one of the good digital artists right he his work um is kind of reminiscent of Sparth, but I would say, uh, with, um, more, more emphasis on painting, right? <clears throat> what I like about his work is that he doesn't try to photo bash as, like, as much as, like, all the other industry artists, right? Um, he just, he works with, like, really strong fundamentals, strong painting, right? And, uh, I think he's a really, really great artist, you know, for, especially for the digital age, right? Where so many people are taking shortcuts, um, I don't, I, I don't see uh, Jeremy doing that in his work, right? Which I really appreciate. Um, let's see. So yeah, he, he, you know, I talked to him. He was a really nice guy. Uh, I bought his book, you know, because you know, uh, it's a he has great artwork, right? And I, got, I bought a couple of his prints uh, later on, right? Um, but yeah, uh, overall, really nice guy, cool guy to talk with. Uh, I believe he has like a like a small teaching program. I don't know if he's still doing that, right? Um, but yeah, you guys should check out his work, right? Check out Jeremy Fence. You know, look at his artwork, right? After after we're uh, done with this review, right? Um, but with all that said, uh, let's uh, let's jump into this book. Oh wait 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 wait! Hit that like, hit that subscribe, right? And now let's jump into this bad boy. Okay. So I think I got this book for maybe like. 20 30 dollars right i can't really remember right 2018 wow yep see you can see uh he gave me a little little signature right there right really really nice yeah awesome there we go arid oasis okay so you can see right right away that he's got He's got a really good style going on, right? Um, and a really good sense of design, you know? See right here, you can see his uh, little um, thumbnails right there, you know? And um, yeah, man, like I said, uh, he's like sparse, but like uh, more focused on painting, right? Um, I would say that his, uh, what do you call it, his shapes, like he, no, he has like like you know those really strong monolithic shapes, right? Um, but he has more, uh, you know, tightly designed stuff as well, which is really really cool. Yeah, look at this animal, or this uh, this like mechanical animal, mechanical, m m mech animal, mech mech animal. I don't know, but yeah, <clears throat> really really cool design. I like the I like the head right there, um, and I like that it kind of looks like a. Down here looks like kind of like an elephant. Yeah. yeah, really, really cool stuff, dude. <clears throat> Let's see. Junk tent. Yeah, and you can see he has um, he has a little bit of uh, <clears throat> uh, what do you call it? Snippets of uh, of uh, commentary talking about like you know where this piece came from and like you know how. Um, how was process, right? He says, here we go. I learned a great deal about painting and storytelling with this one. How can I tell a story about this culture by showing where they live? This image, though not perfect, reawoke a new idea in me that has inspired me ever since. And in some way, I'm still tr uh, trying to fully grasp. This image was also featured in Spectrum 24. That's really cool. Nice. It's a, it's a really nice image. You know what I mean? I like the composition. Oh, I like this guy. I like the big, fat, 
a square butt. You know, it's like it's like a spider, but with like a big old butt. You know what I mean? Right? Really like that. Yeah, I'm not gonna try to read every commentary, right? Uh, maybe if one uh, sticks out to me, I'll read it. But this one's pretty short, so I'll, I'll read for you guys. Um, for some reason, every time I paint a desert, it has to be at, at sunset. Many of the images in this chapter have similar themes between them. These themes will hopefully, one day, develop in their own unique world. Okay. Yeah. Look at that, you can see this. I love... You know, this reminds me... A lot of, um... Simon Stalin Hogg, right? I'm sure, uh... I'm sure he's uh, seen his work before, right? But I love this, like, you know, these circular designs with this, like, you know, like, wires coming out, junk, all that stuff, right? And then, see, <clears throat> see how much things look better when they're all painted, you know what I mean? When it's just all hand-painted, right? Like, look, oh, look all this junk, right? So many people would just, like, slap a junk texture on there and just be done with it, right? But, you know, he's, he's in here, just, you know, he drew everything out, right? And he's just like, oh, I'll just put some... I'll just layer some uh, <clears throat> some lights on top, right? Um, and then it's just some junk, right? And it just doesn't distract, right? You could actually just look at the image, right? See see what he's trying to convey and not feel like, oh, is this real? Oh, is that not real? Oh, is this a 3D 3D thing? You know, it's 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 so much better. <clears throat> Here we go. Here we go. The bunker. Okay. Yeah. Look at that. Look at that. See, I'm telling you, he builds it on these really, really nice um, thumbnails with, like, really strong uh, silhouette, right? Uh, which I really, really appreciate, you know? Like, look at this. Look, look at how strong these shapes are, right? How they lead your eye, right? Um, you know, this is very typical of, uh, you know, like, um, Viz Dev in uh, video games, right? But, you know... When it's done well, it just looks really good. You know what I mean? And I, uh, I just enjoy like this. I also enjoy like the color palette he's got in here, like this kind of blue into the this yellow right here. That's really really nice. All right, this was a sister painting I did in this setting. A sis, no, yeah, a sister image to Junk Tent, further developing this post-apocalyptic world and the culture that inhabits it. This one further develops the de desert dwelling culture and how they survive in this unforgiving climate. Okay. So yeah, this is just like some kind of like a housing unit, right, that they live in. Really cool. There we go. And I, I, I'm guessing that um, a lot of this is, uh, what do you call it, you know, uh, developing this kind of like desert uh, tribe you know, that he's, he's got going on right here. There you go. There is much to discover about the old world. Okay. So yeah, you can see right here that um, he's got some, like, uh, some uh, tribesmen, right, exploring these old <coughs> derelict uh, structures, right? I'm assuming this is some kind of ship, right? And, um, yeah. I can see some texture bashing right here, you know, but that's, like I said, it's it's well implemented, so it's not really distracting, you know, but I, I, I will acknowledge that uh, I do see it, you know, I do see some of it, unless I'm completely wrong and that's like, uh... no, it has to be a texture, right? <clears throat> wow, look at these huge big creatures, dude. That's- these are cool, you know? Wow. And you got these nice clouds and, like, you know, uh, cliffs to- to show the scale of them. That's really nice. Yeah, and I like how he put the moon behind the, um, the focal point, right? The- the one we're supposed to look at. And, um, <clears throat> you know, like, uh, with all good, uh, what do you call it? Viz dev work. There's there's proper scaling, right? So you can see right here that he put one that's really close, kind of off camera, right? To just show how big these guys are, right? Like over here, you know, you have the clips and all that stuff, and that's nice, right? But there's nothing like having an actual, 
um, what do you call it, guy that's like really close, and then one that's some that are farther away. You know, he like um, uh, we call it, like I said, Sparth does this too, where he he will take like one and he'll just he'll put them around, right? Um, I'm surprised there isn't like one more like that's like smaller back here, right? Um, but either way, like having these multiple ones that are like at different uh, depths, right, really helps uh, show you the scale of these guys, right? <coughs> here we go. Uh... Oh, this is a uh, this is a Star Wars painting. Okay. All right. Oh, here we go. Get some, get a little bit of process right here. On to yet another inspiration of mine. I started with a simplified value uh, composition study. Right? Yeah. See, um, this is usually how it starts out. Just a basic thumbnail, right? Um, he's just using like maybe three tones, right? Three or four tones, right here. Really nice. And then, <clears throat> then uh, in solid black I paint in the shadows with that I can mask off and add colors in between the lights and dark shapes okay so he's just using this as a quick convenient little way to uh, map out the uh, lights versus the darks right uh, if you if you guys use Photoshop then you'll probably know what we're talking about <clears throat> Let's see. the last thing you'll see I had fun playing with a first-person perspective with this one. Oh, okay. So, yeah, all right. I didn't notice that we were we're in the grave. We're in a shallow grave right now, right? Um, at first, I thought these guys were Amish, but I'm guessing that these guys are like this is like a Western thing. Oh, okay. So this is actually called Amish Paradise. All right. So, uh, so yeah. Um, you guys don't. I, I'm pretty sure this is a reference to uh, Amish Paradise by uh, Weird Al Yankovic, right? Which is a uh, parody of uh, Gangster's Paradise, but with the Amish, right? So that's funny. So they they are the Amish, right? That's fucking funny. Yeah, I like this image. Um, it's cool that he's he's using these uh, the the perspective here to help kind of um, make the eye flow towards the focal point. Which is like I would say this guy, right? Really nice, uh, simple. Like like I said, uh, the fact that he painted everything just makes it feel so much better, man. It makes it feel so much better. Like there's no there, there's nothing like the mountains out there. They're not real. They're just like you know simply painted. Um, I prefer a simply painted background over a realistic background that is not painted, right? Talked about this many times. I'll talk about it again. And I'll keep fucking saying it until things are different, right? <clears throat> Here we go. Haystack houses. Oh, I like these shapes. I like the like more. You know what I mean? Yeah. This is more. Uh, this is more like a kind of like a Disney, not Disney style, but like uh, animation aesthetic, right? Because these are like, you know, these, these houses. They look a little friendly. You know, they look like like camel humps almost, right? Like, yeah. Yeah. I like the colors he's got going on too. <clears throat> I like this like yellow that transitions into this uh this uh what do you call it? Violet, right? Yeah, that's look that's looking nice. Okay. Oh For the Great North. Alright. Let's see. Oh, all right, we're getting some mountains now. Here's an example on how a simple mountain study can inspire a new story. Okay, so this is this is a study that he did, right? All right, that's cool. And then obviously that inspired this, right? Uh, in search of a new home. Okay. In search for a new home. Reminds me of, um, Ice Age. Yeah. Looking really good. I like these, I like these figures that are painted here. Stay with me. Okay.
Yeah, you can see right here, this, this I'm, I'm definitely getting, like, um, sparse inspiration here, you know, with, like, this big monolithic shape in the foreground, um, some big shapes in the background that are a little bit, you know, more faded away. You know, and that, it's not, that, that, like, it's not like Sparth specifically owns that, but I could see the inspiration, right? Yeah. I used uh, simple shapes to develop these two, focused on achieving a sense of mood by limiting myself. It's easy to get distracted with infinite possibilities when painting digitally. Yep, that's a big problem, right? Um, with... See, Photoshop, with Photoshop, it's like having the ultimate tool where you have so many options and so many things you could do that it's really kind of hard to choose what to do, right? Um, you know, like Netflix, right? When, you're, when you've watched like a decent amount of things and you're like, well, there's so many things to watch. I, I kind of want to watch anything, right? And you're just, you're just going around select the menu, right? Um, sometimes it's better to just limit yourself, right? So that you like you have only only these couple of things that you can um, do, right? Uh, like perhaps like limiting your colors or limiting uh, your um, your values, right? Um, doing things like that can really help um, push you in experimentation and show you how how much you can achieve with um, a very limited uh, mindset. Right? It's about restricting, not, uh, it's about restricting your, what, what you want to create, as opposed to, um, leaving it completely open, right? You know, I kind of view, like, when, like, when I'm making a piece, right, I kind of view it as, like, concrete, right? At first, it's wet, and, like, you could form it to, like, the basic thing you want, right? And then as time goes, it hardens, it hardens, it hardens, and it gets to the point where you can only make, like, the small little details, you know, you start off big, You've made the big old form, right? And then you you work from that, and you start making smaller forms, and then from that you make this you start work on the tiny little details. But by then it's hard, right? And so um, there's a certain point where it's like it's dry, you know, it's done, right? Um, and that I think that applies with um, with these works as well. Uh, there's a lot of artists who are like, oh, a work, a piece of work can never be done. Right, and that's I I I disagree with that. There's a certain pieces they they dry, you know, like li like literally dry, right? Um, and after a certain point, you're like, I can't. If you work this on this anymore, you have a possibility of a overworking it or b, um, what do you call it? Uh, just having to uh, restart, right? Um, <clears throat> Though some people, like, you know, there's some pieces that can be worked on later because of the level of progress that you've made, right? Once you hit a certain level of progress, once you've hit, like, the detail stage, right, um, adding highlights and stuff like that, there's not really much more you can do on top of that, right? Unless you just have to um, hard reset, you know, a portion of the thing, right? For example, right, let's say, like, um, this rock is like, you know, it's done. It's gone to the detail stage. It's, you know, you've painted all the crazy stuff that you wanted, right? Um, if you paint any more, um, you risk overworking it, right? And then once you overwork it, uh, it's gonna get to the, it's gonna, what, what you're gonna eventually um, feel is that either you stop and go back or you um, have to paint over it and then reset, you know, basically, and then start from scratch, right? Knowing what you know then, right? Um, so yeah, limiting yourself is much better. Understanding that, uh, there is, like, a, there's a limit for pieces, right? Um, I would say, like, 20 hours is a really good marker for, like, when you're, when you're like, okay, I'm done. Like, like, whatever, whatever it is, um, it should take 20 hours to, from start to finish. 20 hours and that's like that's a long period of time right um i finished stuff like before that you know like depending on what it is right but 20 hours i would say is like the max right if you're doing more than 20 hours um you're starting to overwork right um unless you're doing something that's like sculpture or something something that's extremely time con um time consuming 
you know, if it's just like a regular painting, if it's just like a digital painting, you know, or something that could be, um, something that, that is like, like making a mark on like a canvas, right? Or like whatever, right? That should take about like 20, 20 hours, right? Most, right? If you do more than that, you're overworking it, right? Anyway. Uh, with that said, let's just let's go back to this. You know, sacred stone. My opinion is that there should always be a holy artifact between every waterfall and in every cave. Yep. Okay. This is really nice, and it's like I like the I like that you get like these little snippets of like um, you know his mindset, right? And like I said, these are very this is very simple. You know, like these figures aren't overdeveloped, right? And that's not the point because the point is to look at the stone right here. Right. Um, I like the colors. I like this yellow versus blue kind of lighting right here. That's really nice. Okay. Oops. Here we go. We have like a little um, animation guy right here. You know. Uh, and the the I like the I like the finish on his like his gloves and this the spear right here. Um, his face is alright, you know? It's, like I said, very, uh, animated style, right? Uh, but it's cool that he, he did this whole picture and then kind of blurred it out, right? So that you could focus on him. Yeah. That's pretty good. Quick sketch about thinking about what life might be like at this altitude, okay? Okay, so this is just a little quick study. Or not, uh, or a little, not, not quick study, uh, little quick, uh, speed paint. That he uh, <clears throat> he's he's uh, making these little structures for these guys to live in, right? Um, and these guys they're they're living at a at a lower altitude than the mountains because you you know you can't live up there, right? You have, you want to live somewhere flat, right? It's still in the environment, but it's not um, it's definitely not in the mountains, right? Oh. An older one, but the first paintings, or, or, or what, but one of the first paintings where I learned to, how to let go, yeah. Um, and I, I, what I think he means by that is, um, to just kind of go wild, right? Um, because there's a lot of time where you're applying the things you learn you're, you're remembering every fundamental piece of knowledge, right? Um, and there's a point where, like, like you've practiced it, you thought about it, and it's, like, in your blood, right? So you can kind of just go for it, right? Um, and that, that, that also includes um, how tight you work, right? Um, sometimes a piece can look a lot better if you loosen up, right? Because uh, <clears throat> then it, it, you know, you're going into the soup, right? You're going into the the uh, primordial soup from which artists, uh, you know, take from, right? Um, you're convening with the muses, you know, whatever whatever label you want to put on it, right? You're you're in the zone, right? Um, and if you're if you're thinking too much technically, that could stop you from achieving that state, right? Um, so it's important for an artist to uh, eventually learn to just um, trust their instincts, just go for it, right? Um, and uh, let go, right? Um, and sometimes, uh, what do you call it? You know, a lot of, like, I feel like I'm this way, where I'm very tight. I always start, I always, um, I've always struggled with uh, being loose, right? Which is basically just like not having to paint everything super fucking detailed, right? And then, like, super rendered. Um, and just learning, like, you know what, dude? Two values can just do it, right? Like, see this tree, how simple it is, right? And how it just has, like, ch -ch 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 -ch, these couple little lines. And, like, that's it. That's all you need to really say about it, right? As opposed to, like, painting out, painting the entire tree and then, like, you know, making sure the sheep is really good and, and rendering it out a little bit. It's like, that. sometimes it's unnecessary, right? So, um... I could see that in this piece where he's just he's just letting go, letting things be a little bit simple, and uh, you know trying to uh, feel things out, 
right? Not really sure if that was his mindset, but that's, in my experience, that's what I've learned. Um, and uh, how, how I, like, you know, when he said let go, that's exact. that's immediately what I thought of, right? So I, I, I'm, I'm hoping that uh, he means the same way, right? He means the same thing. One of the first paintings where I learned about painting a simple statement. Okay. Yeah, it's just trees, figure, you know? Very easy. Um, I think this is either a low, low res JPEG or he put like some kind of filter on top of it. Yeah, there's some kind of like texture filter, like as almost like a, it's like a fake canvas, right? Yeah. Looking really good though. From the neighborhood. Okay. Ah, cool. So we're getting some studies. Really nice. Okay. Yeah. I grew up in Cleveland, and this image brings back a lot of memories of past winters. Okay. So I'm su I'm assuming that this is like his backyard or something, right? Um, but you can see right here that this guy he knows how to paint, right? Um, you know, first and foremost, if you're creating. Um, to to get good, you gotta copy, right? And I don't mean like copy like design ideas, but I mean like copy the world, right? Build up your fundamentals, right? Light, shadow, color, right? Um, composition, right? Uh, being able to like look at an object and be like, oh, I could draw that, right? That's a huge thing, right? I don't know why. I don't know why this episode has become like the um the uh, begin uh, beginner's art lessons, right? But, um, you know, that's what it is right now. But, you know, um, learning how to draw something that's in front of you is huge, right? You're like, you look at something and you're like, oh, I can match that color. Uh, I could make sure the, v the, the values are right. I can make sure the structure is correct, right? And I could compose a good image, right? Those three things uh, will, are, are fundamental to every art piece that you're gonna make, right? And if you get, you could build that up just by copying, right? And so um, you should do that. Basically, it's a good way to build skill. Um, you can't just 100% design stuff from the beginning, right? Because you're like, how am I gonna, how am I gonna know how to paint snow if I don't paint snow, right? How am I gonna know the little subtleties? of um, like like stuff like this bush, right? And the way the light falls on it, right? Unless I paint it, right? And these knowledges, you know, that's why they call it a study, right? Because you're studying something, right? And, um, you know, maybe <clears throat> maybe not initially these things will benefit you, but later down the line, you're like, oh, well, I have to draw some kind of, uh, some kind of uh, shrubbery that's similar to this, right? Well, how do I do that? Well, from my previous experience, right? Um, doing a study, right, where I had to do that, I can now apply that to my new piece, right? And through that, you know, the study becomes useful, right? So yeah, and it's, you know, sometimes it's just fun to just not really think too hard, you know, and um, just copy something, right? Yeah. <clears throat> there we go. It puts you in a different mindset than designing. Designing is more, um, I feel like it, it works your brain a little bit harder, but doing like a study um, is something that, something that's easy to do and kind of relaxing in a way right because then you don't have to worry so much about um like exactly what you're creating because you already have the reference right there right <clears throat> here you go laguna beach here we go i fir first painting i did when i moved to southern california it's after a long drive from east coast to west coast at the end of the journey this was the this was our first sight of the pacific okay there you go, Laguna Beach, right? I've been here, right? Um, yeah, looking nice, dude. Looking real good. Look at all these little subtle colors she's got right here. You know, this is just a nice composition overall, right? Yeah, I don't remember Laguna Beach being so rocky, right? Maybe he went to a certain part. Yeah. Looking real nice, though. All right. Two paintings from my old neighborhood when I lived in uh, Towson, Maryland. It was a house I ran by every day above, 
or I ran by every day. So this one, and a building with many mysteries. It was a time. It was <clears throat> at this time the light looked just perfect for a painting. Yep. So yeah. So this is a house that he ran by all the time, right? This is a uh, another one that he that was in his neighborhood. This is a cool little building right here. Yeah, this is kind of mysterious. Like, why is it so red, dude? Yeah, and you got the little American flag right there. Is that a government building? Yeah. Like I said, dude, doing these little studies, you know, just just like little things that are around you, you know, um, just take a picture, man, and uh, just do a little study, right? You're like, oh, I like this, right? You don't know why, just take a picture, right? It could be useful later, right? So. Uh, doing studies like this is very valuable to an artist, right? And it gives you a sense of um, what you like, right, in a picture, right? Um, and how you're going to compose things. Uh, like, for example, like, in my backyard, I have I have all these little trees and, like, uh, sh and uh, flowers and, and stuff like that, right? And... Um, when the light when the light is right it some of it is just so gorgeous right and then uh you're just like oh you know what? i'll take a picture of it right and then you know take that extra time to compose the image make it really look nice make the composition really nice and then you get a nice painting out of it right so um in a way you're all you're, you're practicing your composition skills you're practicing your light skills you're practicing um what do you call it um your sense of uh your sense of beauty, right? And you know, like it's and you know, if you think it's beautiful, right? S chances are someone else is gonna find it as beautiful, right? Someone else is gonna like it as well, right? Um, but you're kind of just developing your taste, right? That's very important uh, to an artist, right? You're developing your sense of like, oh, what do I like about this building? Oh, what do I like about this tree? Why do I like this? What what do I like about how the light falls? onto these buildings, right? And once you start understanding that, you'll understand how your work is gonna look, right? So yeah, <clears throat> really important. Studies, you know, obviously, huge, huge uh, part of being an artist, right? Um, but one that should not be overlooked, right? One that should not be uh, understated, right? A moment during one of my visits to Beijing, wandering alone and taking in the beautiful uh, Jingshan Park. Okay, so this is in uh, in Beijing, right? That's really cool. Yeah, this is all a pre-viral uh, outbreak, right? So yeah, looking looking really nice. Yeah. La Jola Coast. Okay. So you could see by his finish. Um, that these are probably a little bit earlier than before, but you could see the pieces of uh, what will, will eventually be, you know, the art that he makes, you know, later, <clears throat> right? Like I, I could see the way he draw these draws these like little hills and uh, shrubbery. Like, see how like there's this hard cut right here, you know, onto the coast. Um, I'm getting a sense of his shapes, right? And uh, that 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 follows through in his uh, other pieces as well. So. Yeah. Airport, airport Vista. Okay, so I'm assuming that he says, "I see this every day leaving work." Yep. So he lives nearby an airport. Okay. Or he works by, his uh, work is by an airport. That's really cool. You know, the Chesapeake, and you 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 see how um, like, if you get the values right. It look it could almost look uh, photoreal, you know what I mean, right? See how he he painted this? It it's it's just on the cusp of photoreal, right? And that's just by getting the values right, you know, and getting the color correct, right? Um, if you could do that, uh, you don't need to paint all like crazy detail, you know what I mean? You just have to get the colors right. You just have to get the values right. Once you do that, um, it's gonna look realistic, right? Really nice. Oh, before I forget. Okay. Let's see. <clears throat> a 
quick doodle back when I taught at M at a M I C A. Something about the simplicity and efficiency of shapes made this image stick with me all this time. I discovered something that day that I will never forget. Yeah. Yeah. You see how like just these uh, these little negative shapes can um, create such an uh, like a sense of space, right? It's really really nice. So I'm guessing he's doing this in ink, right? Um, yeah, these are done with marker. You know. Sketch this one at a beach near me that nearly just, and, and that early discovery keeps inspiring me. Yep. Yeah. See, see how like just light and shadow can really make you. C c that's all you need for a, for an image, right? For for a painting. Or a drawing, right? It's just light, shadow, that's it. You know? And breaking those two things down, making them look nice, that's just, that's what being an artist is, right? There we go. Look at these. It's nice to see, like, see how he, like, built himself up, right? Um, focusing on fundamentals, right? Things that are um, good to study. Right, and he's not afraid of uh, not doing digital, right? Which I see a lot of artists today are, right? They're either on one camp or the other, right? Um, I I like to do both, right? I can no longer work in digital, right? But I I did I worked in digital for very very long part of my uh, art career, right? Um, you know because of my hand I can't really do that anymore. But I recognize that um, knowing both is way more valuable than just knowing one or the other, right? But um, what you get out of uh, traditional value, or, or sorry, not traditional value, traditional uh, mediums is uh, the fundamental knowledge and strength, right? Um, strengthening your foundations, your fundamentals, will strengthen your overall painting when you work digitally, right? So whatever you do here will make your digital even better. Right? Um, I would say it's better to work traditional and then go digital because then those those skills can be applied over, right? But they're both interchangeable. So whatever you whatever you learn first doesn't really matter. Um, the skills are interchangeable. They will work together, right? At the end of the day, um, art is very basic, right? Um, easy to learn, hard to master, right? Uh, think about this, you know, all the great masters uh, that exists, right? Um, they could do that. They can make all these like extremely complicated pieces that are huge and gorgeous and like like it, historical pieces of work, right? Um, and a child can do a drawing, right? A child can just you know. So it has that kind of eternal quality about it, which is something that I really enjoy. Like that fact is so cool, right? That like you know. Um, it's it's a lifelong practice, and it's one that you could do as a child, and you could do as an old man, right? And uh, the the progress in between, you know, that's just like it's always there, right? And so yeah, um, I think that that universal factor shows how powerful drawings can be, right? Like even fucking cavemen. Like make cave scrawlings, you know. It's like it's instinctual. It's, it's uh, it's part of who we are. It's part of how we made our mark in the world, right? Literally, right? Made a mark. Um, so yeah. Here we go. <clears throat> Let's see. Carlsbad. Okay. This is it California or? Yeah, yeah, it has to be. Yeah, it's got these palm trees. Look at these. Just really see you can see that his fundamentals are really strong. Right? So he, he probably knew how to he, he knew how to draw before uh maybe going digital or, or he just he just uh, is a strong artist in general, right? There we go. The next few pages are all about creating a simple statement to capture an idea quickly. Okay. So yeah, um again, uh I can see the sparth inspiration, that big monolithic shape, right? 
uh, with these uh, little characters on the side, right? Um, and I'm guessing this one is just to show uh, scale, like, whoa, like, big object, right? <clears throat> so some of these ideas are bad, some, some are not. Some you may recognize as finished works in this book. Some eventually become finished works in a... Some will eventually become finished work in a future book. Okay. Black Sands. I like this one. It almost seems like these people were like coming out of the water, you know, and like this person's like, what the fuck, dude? What do these water people do? You know, some are experienced in developing a larger world. Okay. See, I'm assuming with these, he wants to maybe um, make something for himself. At first I thought these were storyboards, but they're not. They're not. Um, so these are probably like something that he's developing to create like his own story, right? You know? What's important is that these are all these are all quick and I sketch them out before I forget. Okay. Yeah, these are these are nice little quick quick ideas, right? And um, you know, like he says, you it's easy to forget cool ideas that you have. Um, and so a simple way to do that is just to do a little quick, uh, study, right? Oh, this is definitely from- this is from Blade Runner right here. This composition. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, these are just little studies, man. Yeah, or- or little ideas he had, you know what I mean? Let's take a look. Uh, you guys probably can't see these w that well, but... They're all just forms in a frame. There we go. That's nice. Hey, dude. Uh, title drop? Bro. Bet you never seen a title drop in an art book. <laughs> there you go. The future. Okay. There you go. Inspired from some of my favorite sci fi book cover artists. Okay. The Golden City. Is this some, is this like a Mobius inspiration? Maybe I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure because like um, I saw like these. I saw this spaceship and I was like, hmm, that's a little. It's a little Mobius, you know, a little Star Wars. Uh, but I, I'm not so sure. I'm not gonna call it out right now. You know? See this. This is more. This is like definitely like Blade Runner inspired right here. So yeah. Cyber City, okay. Yeah, it looks like a screenshot from a Cyberpunk, right? Except uh not glitch the fuck out, right? Yeah. The thumbnail was inspired by film noir cinematography and the finish retains that with a splash of color detail to give life to this world. See how doing like a simple little quick study, or a little, not quick study, a little um, thumbnail can inform a much larger finished piece, right? Really nice. There you go. This continues that story. My inspirations are clear on this one. <clears throat> yep. LA20XX. Yeah, you could definitely see the Blade Runner uh, inspiration in this. Oh, it's Batman! Hey! Inspired by the art style and look from the 90s cartoon. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Look at that. You love to see him, dude. Batman! Right, and this is a, like you said, the um, the '90s cartoon look, which I'd say is probably the his most iconic look at this point. You know, I still enjoy, <clears throat> I still enjoy exploring abandoned places, and that feeling inspired by, and that feeling inspired this painting. I started from a very simple design and added complexity without compromising my original thumbnail. 
want to explore this world of decay more in the future. Yeah. So you can see in this thumbnail, it's very simple, right? And then <clears throat> using that as a basis for his light and shadow shapes, he adds detail, right? Well, still maintaining that um, simple light, light and dark structure that he's built up, right? Uh, maybe he added like stuff like right here on the side, but overall it's it's basically the same thing, right? And uh, you know you start off you start off with the with the big, and then you go into small, right? Big shapes into small shapes, right? Plan it out. <clears throat> into the woods. Okay. Here we go. <clears throat> Fishing village built around a mysterious ancient temple behind the waterfall. Okay. Village and the ancient. Okay. Yeah, this is looking really nice. I like the colors. I love like that bright, vibrant green. You know. Um, I like the I like the asymmetry of the house. Right, Looks really nice, and you can see right here that he he built it all in a little thumbnail first, right, and then boom, finished it. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's really important to um, like for something complex like this. Um, it's a lot better to. To start out with a little thumbnail first to figure out what you're doing, right? Yeah, because uh, something like a character or a figure or something with like um, reference, right? Um, that could be done without really needing too much uh, planning out. But something complex like an environment, you need to plan it out, right? You need to figure out what what you're trying to state, what it's gonna look like, right? Um, how the composition flows, so... Yeah, starting off with a thumbnail, always good. Yeah. A blend of one of my favorite games and anime background art. I learned about from... A lot, I learned a lot about painting from... Painting different types of grass and trees in one scene. Yeah. You can see, uh, Mr. Uh, Link right there. Right? You can see one of the ancient... Uh... What they call robots they had. I can't remember what they're called. But yeah, look at this nice little study he did. You know, the strength of painting, right? The knowledge of color, right? Yeah. See, I would say, like, you know, um, there's not anything significantly uh, special about one of the aspects, right? But it's just like the, the strong fundamentals um, that are on display make a really, really fantastic piece. And that's really what you want. Right? You don't want to have like, oh dude, like my line art is like the best part of my thing, right? Or my color is the best part of my thing. I mean, like, obviously, as an artist, you're going to have that one thing, right? Um, but relying on that versus like working on your weaknesses, right? Um, I say it's better to work on your weaknesses, right? Maybe while maybe while you're studying, right? You work on your weaknesses, and once you graduate, you know you start working on your strengths, right? Um, because at the end of the day, if your weaknesses are like foundational weaknesses, right, it will affect all of your art, right? No matter how like and like any real artist will be able to notice them, right? Um, but if you work on your foundations, make those extremely strong. You can make anything you want, right? And you could change your you could change your medium, you could change your style, you could change you could change the composition to be whatever you want because your fundamentals are so strong that you don't you could do whatever you want basically. You can create uh, any kind of image, right? As opposed to being someone who has like like a style, right? That's like, oh well this is my style, dude. You know, and I only do that because that's what I'm strong at. Otherwise I, I like you you don't have the confidence as of someone who has um, built their fundamentals to a certain degree to the point where they're like, well, uh, if I want to mimic this style, I can. If I want to mimic this style, I can, right? 
um, if I want to change it up, experiment, then I could, I could do that, right? And having that comfort, right? As opposed to someone who's kind of stuck in one style, right? Um, experimentation uh, is another huge part of being an artist, right? Um, if you're sticking to one style all the time, um, I guess like, you know, for production, if you're like creating something, yeah, you want to stick to one style, right? But um, if you're if you're wanting to grow as an artist, you should you should change it up, dude. Um, you could do animation. You could do uh, TV uh, TV animation. Sorry, you could do TV animation style. You could do um, what do you call it? Realistic live action. You could do video game like Blizzard style, right? You could experiment, right? And then through that, you will find your own voice in each department, right? And having that breadth is a uh, huge huge as an artist right it shows that like oh i could design whatever you want you know um you want a cartoony we can make it like that you want it like this style we can make it like that right um and those those people uh what do you call it like uh i remember one of my uh a, a, a teacher said um you want to be a chameleon right uh to be in the industry uh let's see like the, the people who do like the one thing right uh, they will get, they might get the big jobs, right? Um, but the chameleon, the person who can mimic and do all, all these other different styles will always be working, right? Like the person will, they'll get that, they'll get that lead, uh, character designer for one project, right? Um, but the person who can shift, do whatever you want, right? Will always find work because, you know, maybe they don't need that style for for this other production right um but then you can morph your style to whatever you whatever they need right um so being able to experiment change up right huge big right huge as an artist there we go let's see red autumn Ooh, i like that oh you can see right here like you, you, there's this big like circular shape right so i'm assuming that like you know one of the like one of the beasts or the like the wolf you know went through here or he like he's like he did the howl which like psh, opened up this entire thing really cool uh, i don't know if this is low res or this is like some texture bashing right here i can see some right here there maybe this is painted i'm not sure but yeah this is this this is probably early on this painting was quite the learning experience. My favorite part is still the original thumbnail. That's cool. But yeah, you can see right here, like, he can go... He can go detailed, man. He can get in there, right? Um, I'm assuming this is probably one of his later works, right? Because his skills have been built up, but... You could see that, uh... Like, at the end of the day, it just starts with a thumbnail, man. It just starts off with the simple shapes, right? And then you get into the details, man. Right? Yeah. See, it takes it takes steps to get to this level, right? And uh, you know, some some people will just look at this and they're like, "I can't do that. Like, I there's no way it'll never happen, right?" And all I gotta say is, uh, you never know, man. You don't know, right? Maybe it won't look like this right but you could build yourself right he's like look like i love how these two pictures are next together right because like this one shows like you know some inexperience right or maybe maybe not inexperience but like a, a, a lower fin lower uh level of finish right um it's not hard like from getting getting from here to like here that's not that big of a leap right you've already got all the other stuff right you got this the shapes, the details, right? This, this is all just like reference, right? And learning how to render correctly, right? So yeah, um, don't think it's impossible. Uh, just, just take the steps. You know, it's a, it's a logical process, right? There you go. A chance encounter. Thought of this while driving home, you know, late, late. 
you know, in the rain late one night. Okay. This guy's head is huge. But yeah. Look at that. Look at this style, man. Look at that. Look at like I love I love like how he made the the, the car a little bit more cartoony, right? Got a little Totoro there. That's that's scary, bro. Honestly, it's a little it's a little frightening, right? But yeah, really really like the finish on that. <clears throat> yeah, Spirit of the Forest. Is this the same girl? Hold on. No, that's like a warrior girl. Oh, it looks like this girl right here with the with the bow. It's like maybe she was like chasing down this girl. Got it. She caught an arrow to the back. And, um, you know what? She's being smart. She didn't pull it out, right? Because, uh, if you pull it out, you're gonna, you're gonna bleed out, right? Yeah, I don't want that. Things you find in the wood. Rusted truck. Yeah, look at that. Is this from a study? Because, uh, how. <laughs> I could imagine a truck out there getting stuck like this, but I'm like, did that really happen? That would have been cool. Yeah. A little composition right here. It's what he would have wanted. Okay. Yeah, they're taking, they're taking some, somebody who's passed away into uh, into the forest. So maybe they're, maybe they're gonna bury him in the forest. Yeah. The Secluded Lake, an adventure with her dog. Okay. This is cute. Could be a, this could be another, you know, study, right? Again, another study. Yeah, because um, there's not the little thumbnails right here, so I'm assuming when he doesn't do the thumbnail, he it's probably just a study that he's doing that he took a photo of. Yeah. See, very simple, right? But like, once you have this, then you can get into the details, bro. You know, once you have the color, the texture, right, the values correct, then you can start like. But you don't need to do that, you know. Honestly, once your once your painting is like at a certain level, it's like you don't really need to to fussy over every little detail, right? Yeah. You know? The continuing adventures with your dog. So like once you have the big shapes, then you can add the details, man. Right? And honestly, you don't need that much detail to make something look really nice. Look at that. These are these are these are cute. I like the I like the haircut. You know? Really adds some character to the to the girl. Final adventure with her dog. Elven forest, okay? He thought he heard whispers in the trees. And he did. <gasps> what? It's cool, I like that little... I like these little particle effects that are happening. You know? Little floaties. <clears throat> I, like, I like floaties and stuff, right? Homecoming. I think I see a little bit of bashing. Not so sure. Yeah, because like there, there might be some filters put over, but you know, overall looks good. Like I said, uh, texture bashing is not bad as long as you are able to hide it well. Right, and this I would say this is successful in doing that. Right, it doesn't take away from the piece. You know, another example of a simple creek study that turned into a story. Yeah. And you know what? Um, sometimes you could just do like uh, a study, and all you really need to do is add a figure, and then boom, it's a it's a it's a piece, right? Um, so yeah, go ahead, go ahead. like sometimes just try it out. You know, do a study. And you're like, you know what? You'll be really interesting if I added this to it, right? And then go for it. You know what I mean? Then you can build. 
you can build on top of um, a really strong uh, painting, and then now it becomes a narrative, right? Go. A young boy decides to carry on the tradition of fishing. Uh, the tradition of fishing the nearby creek with his recently deceased father's oversized equipment. He soon finds that the job isn't as easy as he thought. Right? That's really that's really nice. It's a really cute image, right? Um, look at all these fish jumping out. He can't catch one of them, dude. Right? That's cute. Really like the colors on this one. Earth, wind, and leaves. Okay. A forest mage. Yeah. Give me a second. I'm uh, ugh, scratching. All right. Yeah. So we got a forest mage. Oh, she's uh, levitating, walking on these little, little uh, land uh, floaties, right? Really nice, like this one. No. A village built on the side of a lush mountain that has been left alone for several years has just been rediscovered. Okay. Yeah, some kind of like ancient village, you know, that's like, you know, with overgrowth on it, right? Yeah, he's, you know what? He's really good at making these like forest environments. You know what I mean? I'm really enjoying his uh, forest pictures because I think his um, I think his colors are really strong, right? Um, and with the more organic stuff, he doesn't have to worry so much about uh, what do we call it uh, perspective, right? Yeah, really nice nature scenes. Oh, okay. Oh, here we go. Here's an index of images that include video process. Listed are the page numbers and the title of the image and the name, the name of the YouTube video where you can watch the video process. Okay. So he actually does. Uh, he actually has done, you know, um, streams, right, and and uh, live paintings, right. Yeah, this is really nice. Please visit my YouTube channel at YouTube slash uh, Jir428. Okay. Yeah, you can check him out right here. Uh, it's really, really, really great of him, you know? Because a lot of people, they're like, you know, they want to monetize this, right? This is an industry artist who's putting his stuff out for free, right? Um, there's other artists that do that, but the fact that they do it at all is just, you know, like they're trying to give back. You know what I mean? They're really trying to give back to the to the artist community, and um, no matter how you look at it, that's that's worthy of being applauded, right? So yeah, good on, good on Jeremy. You know, um, yeah. Hopefully, you know, you guys can check them out. You can check him out. Check out his uh, his streams, right? See um, if you can learn a thing or two, right? <clears throat> Here we go. Jeremy Fensk, born and raised in Cleveland, Ohio, and attending Columbus College of Art and Design. 2005 to 2009. I am now living in Southern California with my beautiful wife and a corgi named Mochi. In, con in a, I'm a concept and visual development artist working in both video games and, and film. I've worked on such projects as Warhammer 40k, Elder Scrolls Online, Destiny 2, as well as unannounced, uh, an unannounced future film. I've also been a teacher for six years and now running my own art mentorship program. I enjoy creating YouTube videos and live streaming my painting process. Right? <clears throat> so yeah, Here's some link. Here's some uh, links for you guys, right? Go ahead and check out Jeremy, right? Um, really great guy, really great artist, right? Um, you know, just a down-to-earth guy who's uh, good at art, right? Willing to willing to share. Um, so yeah, really love his work. Worth checking out, right? Get a little little shot of the back right here, right? Um, I think you could buy this on a store. I'm not so sure, right? Twenty-five bucks cheap as hell right really great book so um <clears throat> yeah let me straighten this out and uh let's uh, let's flip this over and uh, enter the review portion right 
All right, guys, let us enter the review portion for Form and Frame, Volume 1 by Jeremy Fence. Um, yeah, great little book, man. It's, uh, let's see, it's like 72, 73 pages long, right? Um, it's a small little art book, right? Perfect for, uh, you know, where it was at CTN, a little, you know, just like a little fair, right, where you could sell your work. And, um, you know, it's a great little... Um, peek behind the curtain, you know, for, uh, and for an industry artist who I think is really fantastic, right? Um, and it shows how he, what I, what I like about it is that it's showing how he's grown, right? And like pieces that he thinks were like, oh, this is where, this is the piece where I learned this, right? This is a piece where I get, got inspired by that, right? You know, instead of just being just a showcase, um, it's also showing his, uh, his growth as an artist, right? Um, and in some ways, I feel like that's better than having like a really, you know, huge giant art cock, uh, you know, showcase, right? Where like, oh yeah, dude, boom, 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 you know, nothing but hits, 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 right? No, he's showing like, you know, like, oh, this is how I got to the hits, right? This is how like, like, oh, I studied this, I did this, you know, I worked hard and, you know, I, and he's showing pieces that are like at different levels of finish, right? Like, oh, he's, some are just thumbnails. Some are just, uh, some are finished, right? Some are like in between, right? Some are just like, oh, I just did a little quick study, right? And this is how, oh, this idea became something else, right? Um, it's a cool way to see the mindset of an artist, right? Um, as opposed to just having just artwork, right? And these little, the little snippets of commentary I think really, really elevate this to um, a really, a really great art book, right? Um, and like I said, having that peek be behind an, an industry artist mindset, right, in, in a book form, uh, is really nice. And you get some great art from it too, right? So uh, you know, um, if you guys can't tell, I would obviously recommend that you purchase this book, right? If you are a viz dev artist, right, trying to get in the industry or you're just studying, you're in school right now, I, uh, I'd i say get the book, man. Go for it, man. Uh, if you're if you're just, uh, you know, like you just like, you know, digital art, go for it. You know what I mean? Um, this book is cheap. It's uh, well-made, right? And it's got a lot of heart in it, right? Which I think is um, the biggest part, right? Uh, getting, a, getting a little peek into, uh, you know, an artist, an artist, like, line of thinking right and this guy he's worked on big projects right here so um that's invaluable right so yeah guys um i hope you guys uh, check out uh jeremy fence i hope you guys enjoyed this review right hope you guys enjoyed this art book right please uh if you enjoyed this video leave a like on the video um hit that subscribe button right uh leave a comment tell me how you guys feel about jeremy fence's work right check him out dude um uh, hit that bell for notification, all that bullshit, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Thanks a lot.